CERN just found something that shouldn't exist. Right there, at the heart of the most advanced physics lab on Earth, a particle behaved, weirdly. A tiny deviation, so subtle, so unexpected, it's shaking the foundations of what we thought were unbreakable laws. And that particle? Made of antimatter. For decades, scientists believed the universe was symmetrical, that for every particle, there was a mirrored twin, matter and antimatter, born together in the Big Bang, only to destroy each other instantly in a perfect flash of energy. But that's not what happened. Matter won. Antimatter disappeared. And no one knows why. Antimatter, the ghostly counterpart of everything, vanished almost completely. What's left is the question, a question powerful enough to drive decades of research and billions of dollars in experiments. Now, in 2025, something happened at CERN that might crack the silence. The LHCb experiment detected a heavy particle called lambda b, breaking a sacred rule in physics, CP symmetry. A tiny imbalance, but maybe the missing clue. And that's just the beginning. Because while one team was analyzing that anomaly, another did something even more radical. They moved antimatter between buildings using magnetic traps. Imagine trying to carry a miniature star by hand. And when they finally opened the trap, what they saw wasn't what anyone expected. This video is about that mystery about a puzzle that physics is trying to solve in the dark. About antimatter, this strange, disappearing twin acting in ways we never imagined. And maybe, just maybe, it's the start of a whole new chapter in science. So if you're the kind of person who needs to know what the universe is hiding, subscribe and hit the bell. YouTube doesn't always show videos like this. Antimatter sounds like something out of science fiction. And for a long time, it was. Because how do you study something that disappears the moment it touches anything else? One contact and boom, pure energy, nothing left. But the truth is, antimatter is real. We've made it, trapped it, even moved it. And now more than ever, it might be the key to unlocking the greatest mystery in modern physics. Why didn't the universe vanish the moment it was born? Let's go back. When the Big Bang happened, it wasn't generous. It was symmetrical. It created matter and antimatter in equal amounts. That's what the models say. That's what the equations demand. That's what every line of math screams. But there's a problem. You're still here. And that makes no sense. Because if things had gone right, Matter and antimatter should have annihilated each other completely. But something tipped the scales. A tiny, almost invisible excess of matter. About one extra particle for every billion. And that tiny imbalance? That's everything. That raises a question that sounds simple but haunts physics. Why did matter win? Why did antimatter lose? This is what physicists call the baryon asymmetry, and it's one of the deepest, most frustrating puzzles in science. Solving it would be like discovering the source code of reality itself. And that's why CERN exists. It's not just a lab with giant colliders. It's a machine built to ask impossible questions. And lately, it's been picking up signals that something is off, especially with antimatter. In this video, we're diving deep into that weirdness. From particles that are breaking fundamental rules, to experiments that are literally transporting antimatter across buildings like it's a lab sample. And by the end, one question will hit harder than ever. Is physics about to break? What would you do if your mirror started lying? Imagine looking at your reflection and it starts doing something just slightly different. Nothing dramatic, but weird enough to make you stop and stare. That's basically what's happening with antimatter at CERN. For decades, scientists believed the universe was a fair game, balanced, symmetrical. For every bit of matter, there should be an equal and opposite twin, antimatter. And in the beginning, both were created together. 
But here's the catch. They cancel each other out. When they meet, they vanish. No leftovers. So technically, we shouldn't even be here. Somehow, against all odds, a tiny sliver of matter survived. A glitch. And it's that leftover, that tiny imbalance, that built everything. Galaxies, planets, people. But no one knows how that glitch happened. And then in 2025, one particle started misbehaving. It's called the Lambda B, a type of heavy particle made of quarks, the tiny building blocks of everything. Scientists at CERN were studying it alongside its antimatter twin. They were supposed to act exactly the same, but they didn't. It was like watching two dancers in perfect sync until one suddenly misses a beat. And in physics, that's not just a mistake. It's a red flag. The difference was small, just a few percent. But that's massive when you're measuring the universe. The data was so solid, so clean, that scientists are sure something's going on. Maybe for the first time, we caught the universe cheating. But things only got weirder. While one team was studying this misstep, another group of researchers did something straight out of science fiction. They put antimatter in a truck. Yes, a truck. See, antimatter is absurdly sensitive. It can't touch anything. Not glass, not air, not even dust. Or it explodes in a burst of energy. So how do you move it? You build an invisible cage using magnetic fields. Scientists created a trap to suspend antimatter in midair, not letting it touch the walls or the container. It's like trying to carry a soap bubble through a hurricane and praying it doesn't pop. Then they loaded it up and drove. Four kilometers across CERN's campus, 12 hours in motion. Every bump in the road, every vibration, a potential disaster, but they pulled it off. For the first time, antimatter was successfully transported from one lab to another without blowing up. And why does that matter? Because now, we can study antimatter in quiet, controlled environments, far from the magnetic noise of the giant colliders. Finally, we can listen to it closely, without interference. And that brings us to one of the weirdest questions in physics. Does antimatter fall up? It sounds like a joke, but it's not. At CERN, they took it seriously enough to build two experiments, Alpha-G and Gibar. Their mission? Let a few atoms of antimatter go and see which way gravity pulls them. They floated these atoms inside vacuum chambers, kept them perfectly still with magnetic fields, and then just let them drop. Like asking the universe, so what's your move? And what happened? They fell, down, just like everything else. But, and here's the twist, some of the numbers were off, tiny differences, not enough to break physics, but enough to make scientists squint and say, wait a second, because even a 0.1% deviation in how antimatter falls could... Here's the idea. You take a billion particles of antimatter, move them, again, across CERN's campus, and then crash them into unstable atomic nuclei that don't exist in nature and vanish in milliseconds. Why? Because when antimatter hits the heart of an atom, it explodes. And from that explosion, scientists can see exactly what that atom was made of. It's like turning antimatter into a microscope. A way to see inside atoms we've never seen before. To study the structure of radioactive elements with insane precision. And here's the wildest part. This turns antimatter from a mysterious, dangerous substance into a scientific tool. A portable one, one that can be moved, used, pointed at problems like a laser. And maybe, just maybe, help answer the biggest question of all. Why does anything exist? CERN isn't just a lab. It's more like an archaeological dig into the laws of reality. Except instead of shovels and bones, they're digging into the fabric of the universe. And what they're unearthing now changes everything. After proving they could safely move antimatter, something that once seemed impossible, scientists started asking a new question. 
What if the answer isn't in what antimatter is, but in how it behaves? So they shifted strategies. Instead of crashing particles like bumper cars, they turned to something quieter, gentler, more precise. The idea? Look for the tiniest differences between matter and antimatter. No explosions. Just ultra-sensitive comparisons. Like staring at two nearly identical clocks and noticing that one of them ticks just a millionth of a second slower. Over time, that tiny lag becomes everything. These experiments go by strange names, like BASE and ASACUSA, but the concept is simple. Use lasers, magnetic fields, and next-level sensors to watch how antimatter spins, vibrates, and reacts, down to the smallest detail. And once again, the answer was almost the same, but that almost matters. Because if there's even the slightest mismatch, a tilt, a flicker, a whisper of difference, it could be the clue we've been waiting for. Yet so far, it's not enough. All these insanely precise measurements still don't explain why we're here. They don't explain where all the antimatter went. They don't explain why the universe didn't just blink out seconds after it began. And for physicists, that's maddening, but also thrilling, because this is where real discovery begins. CERN isn't pretending to have all the answers. Quite the opposite. They're saying, out loud, something's not adding up, and it's big. Maybe it's a new particle we haven't seen. Maybe it's a new force. Or maybe, and this is the wildest idea, maybe the rules of the universe have a hidden exception, a fine print we never noticed. And that's why the search continues. Because every time antimatter behaves almost like matter, it's also whispering, but not quite. And that not quite, that's where the real story is. It's like trying to finish a massive puzzle and realizing that one piece doesn't fit perfectly. You could force it, but if you do, nothing else lines up. That's what physics is facing right now. All our best theories, from the standard model to Einstein's relativity, are being tested at the edge. And the thing applying pressure is antimatter. With every floating atom, every near-perfect measurement, every weird result that doesn't quite fit, science is being pushed out of its comfort zone and into a new frontier. Because when everything makes sense, nothing changes. But when the rules begin to crack, even just a little, that's when revolutions happen. Think about this. If the universe began in perfect balance, matter and antimatter born together, like two sides of the same coin, then why is only one side still here? That's the premise. Because if things were truly fair, nothing should exist. Not you. Not me. Not the screen you're watching right now. That's the first hint that something's off. But what if that imbalance wasn't an accident? What if, from the very first moment, the universe had a built-in bias, a tiny cosmic favoritism that tilted the scales ever so slightly toward matter? According to the physics we know, that's not supposed to happen. Symmetry is sacred. It's the foundation. But what if that symmetry is just an illusion? What if antimatter has been whispering that truth all along? Here's what we've seen. Particles of antimatter have shown tiny differences in behavior from their matter twins. Not enough to rewrite textbooks, but enough to make physicists uneasy. We've managed to transport antimatter in a truck, yes, seriously, and keep it stable for hours, untouched, contained by magnetic fields like it's a piece of floating glass. That opens the door to studying antimatter outside of CERN, in quiet labs where we can actually hear the universe's faint signals. We've even let antimatter fall to see how gravity acts on it. And so far, it falls like everything else. But even in that result, there are odd numbers, tiny wobbles, just enough to suggest the story isn't over yet. And that's the critical part because science doesn't grow from perfect answers. It grows from imperfections, from results that don't line up, from equations that almost work, but reality says not quite. That's the crack we're staring at now. 
and everything is pointing in the same direction. Something broke the symmetry at the start of the universe. Something so subtle, so hidden, that we're only just now sensing its echoes. And here comes the final and most provocative premise. If the universe favored matter from the beginning, then antimatter isn't just the opposite. It's not just the reflection. Maybe it's the key, the hidden signal that the rules we thought were universal aren't. And if the rules can break, even once, then something bigger is coming. But there's a question no one wants to ask, yet it's sitting right there, knocking at the door. What if the problem isn't with antimatter at all? What if the real flaw is in our own theories? Think about it. We've built massive colliders, detectors the size of buildings, experiments with mind-blowing precision, and still no clear answer. Symmetry keeps cracking, but not enough. Antimatter keeps acting weird, but never revealing the full story. Gravity tests, exotic particles, unstable nuclei. None of it leads to that one big aha moment. It's like physics is playing hide and seek with us, and its hiding spot is better than we thought. The truth is, we might be looking in the wrong place. Maybe the clue isn't in the labs, or the colliders, or the tiniest particles. Maybe it's in the stories we tell, the narrative scientists build to explain the universe. Because physics, in the end, is also a story. And if that story has a flaw in its structure, if we've been building the puzzle with the wrong picture on the box, then everything we think we know might be up for debate. And that's exactly what some researchers are starting to consider. Theories not born from new particles, but from new ways of thinking. And that might be more revolutionary than any discovery. So if you thought antimatter was the final mystery, maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. And what comes next could change, not just physics, but everything we think we understand. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.